You see kids' teams doing rondos before exactly. games now, don't you? Exactly. Yeah, I, mean, even, I mean, the influence but, is extraordinary. But, but. Manchester City going out of the Champions League has always triggered the same conversation about Pep being a ball fraud. <laughs> I don't think it has now. Maybe they've won it, but okay. Is that the question? Um, an overthinker and an overthinker compared to Don Carlo, who gets the job done. But as an Aussie long-time listener of the pod, I'd love to know your impression of his impact on football in England generally. Do you think if he hadn't arrived in the Premier League, the shift to possession-based football would have still happened? Or has it been because of him and his success? Thanks, lads. Well, I think the first thing we have to say is that influence doesn't stay in the one place, does it? So it's not just a case of others looking at him and thinking, oh, it's interesting how he does it. Mm. But in fact, like coaches, their teaching spread. So, for example, the most obvious way of his teaching spreading is Mikel Arteta going off to Arsenal. And I think the way that Arsenal have evolved this season mm. so that they're going more possession-based and they're trying to dominate games more mm -hmm. is quite an interesting twist in, I suppose, the Guardiola diaspora in terms of the mean. Premier League, isn't disciples it? now. Yeah, although I, I very much think that Arteta would not like to be described as that. Yeah, I've gone a bit over but the, the top thing, there. The thing with Guardiola is that his disciples <laughs> are all over the place. Oh. Mm. Like that, Even if they've worked with him or not. Like and 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 like Bielsa. Well, that's what the question's getting at, isn't it? Yeah, but but Bielsa, the, quite. But Bielsa's influence is nowhere near the level of the influence that Guardiola's had. Because Guardiola, what what the difference between like Bielsa and Guardiola is Guardiola's impact far more widespread. It's Oasis versus Shed Seven, isn't it? No, no, no. It's it, it's better yeah. than that. Bielsa's the Pixies and Guardiola's Nirvana. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind. Oh, that. I like that as a comparison. I don't mind that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't mind that. What well, mate? Thanks, bruv. Yeah. Um. But but I don't I don't know if this is just down to Guardiola because tactics, of course, always evolve and change anyway. There's a lot of evolution of tactics before Guardiola even kicked a ball. Oh, of course. And there will be a long time after he's gone. But he's definitely in a big effect. And I, I often think whenever I watch a game at almost any level now, the extent to which teams pass the ball and players are far more technically gifted compared to, say, 20 years ago mm -hmm. is really stark. And even when I go and watch Gospel Borough play, way down in the pyramid, oh, yeah. They they like to play. They try and play, and and and, and I'll go and see Peckham Town quite a lot, and and you don't see as many. To be perfectly honest, you just don't see as many lumps now. Long balls. You, well, you see you see kids teams doing rondos before exactly. games now, don't you? Exactly. Yeah, I, mean, even, I mean, the but, influence is extraordinary. But, but the question isn't that. The question is how much of that is down to Guardiola. Now, if you if you well, it's how you interpret it, isn't it? Because like I said, there's different ways of spreading it. So it's not just people looking at him and thinking that is best practice. That's not the only way it spreads. So you've got Arteta and you've got a disciple like Roberto de Serbi, who is equally a disciple of Bielsa. So, you know, would he have been as attractive to Brighton if the Premier League hadn't changed? Yeah, yeah and, and I think that's time? it. And, and so, my, yeah, exactly. And, and, and uh, Gordon is asking about the Premier League specifically, but obviously it's yeah. important to... To, to prove the point and talk about other leagues and, and much lower down and so on. But I, I, I think that with Guardiola, when he first came over, so he managed that great Barcelona side and, and done very good things with Bayern, not winning the Champions League though, but still it was impressive. He came here and, and there there was members of the press, of course, and, and other football fans who did think, oh, uh, what, what, what are you going to do? You're going to try and change us? I, oh, what, yeah, and all this kind of nonsense. And of course, Guardiola has done that. But I think... I think he has changed a lot of the landscape. Not all of it, but I think he's changed it a, a lot. Because when he was at Barcelona, it did feel like, oh, that's how you play the game. It almost seemed definitive of yeah. that's how you do it. And I know you get a few people going, well, that's, that's one way of winning a game. And obviously Klopp's a little bit different. So there are ways to, you know, different ways to skin a cat. But that seemed to be the most effective, the most impressive, perhaps the most eye-catching at times as well. And when he came here, it took him, you know... Uh, you know, a, a little bit um, of time to get his feet under the desk. Not that long. That first season was scruffy. It was, but yeah. but but, it, but it, it's safe to say he got there. But he had to move players away and yeah. Players but it's stuff. safe to say he took to, mm. you know he he took his because the first thing he did was get rid of Joe Hart. Yeah, and that was right. a massive outcry at the time. Mm. Yeah, um, and he brought in who's it, Claudio Bravo. Yeah, um, all because of the talking about is he good with his feet? Exactly. But the problem with Bravo is he didn't save any shots, so he had to get an Edison. <laughs> you know, so um, so what I'm sort of labouring here to say is that Guardiola's style he showed and proved without a doubt 
that his way of playing is extremely effective and has been absolutely crucial, obviously, to Manchester City's unprecedented success. They have, Which defines the Premier League, whether you like it or not, exactly. over the last he, five or six they years. They have been possibly the best Premier League team we've ever seen. And nobody, nobody in the press, no other fans can deny this now. It is absolutely the, the undisputed truth. So therefore, other teams will see that and go, right, well, we need a manager Who's going to play like that? Because that's the way to do it. And obviously, with you say about De Zerbi and Brighton, well, they're not going to coax Guardiola away from Man City. So who can they get who is uh, influenced by him? And, and therefore, well, it's similar principles. Yeah, it? and therefore but, it spreads. Yeah, I, I think... And yeah. fans like watching that football generally. But Guardiola's not the only reason it spreads. The no. only, it's also come along uh, at the same time as a, a huge uptake in access to knowledge, coaching resources, ideas... The world being a lot more connected, things like Y Scout, things like Coach's Voice. There's a lot of resource for managers at all levels mm. to implement their ideas. And I would also say the key difference is you, you mentioned Man City being under Guardiola being the best team the Premier League's ever seen. Probably true. Um, a lot of people would say before that the best team was um, was Manchester United under Ferguson, right? Mm-hmm. Manchester United under Ferguson. At a, at a particular moment, yeah. Yeah, but w- the reason that's the reason that, you know, the, the team I support, Portsmouth, who were in the second tier at the time, aren't going to go out and say, right, we're going to play at Man United. Mm. It's because that was far more about pace and power and yeah. better players. And yeah. They couldn't do that. Yeah. But if you look at Guardiola now, Andy's naturally going to take the influence and go, okay, De Zerbi here and managers in Europe there. If you look at Ian Everett at Bolton, absolutely famous for his style, famous for yeah. being on record regularly as saying, Guardiola's the guy, yeah. I want to replicate mm. what he's doing. He's an amazing at Bolton, took mm. him up from League Two into League One. Yep, They've been example. very good this season. They've come pretty close. They may still get promoted. Before that, he was playing like that in the National League with mm-hmm. Barrow. And he got them promoted playing yeah, like that. And everyone yeah. was calling them Barrow Salona, right? <laughs> so so what's interesting is it seems to be a system that's so good. And it's the system. That it can be replicated yes. at lots of different levels. Absolutely. Because, because the press is the press and you have to be fit. And clearly it's very, very difficult to press for that long and to win possession heart the pitch and to play possession football and keep the concentration. But actually, if you're playing in the National League yeah. and you're a bit less fit and a mm. bit less good at football and a bit less able to concentrate, mm-hmm. well, so is the other team. Yeah. So it doesn't actually matter as much. It evens itself out. Yeah. So I often think back to when I think Andy and maybe Jonathan Wilson, one or two others, said to me on various shows in this studio back in the day, Mourinho's amazing, but he hasn't changed the game. No. You know, he's just, he's just yeah. done the very best he can do with his yeah. psychology, with his coaching skill, and they've won amazing things and he's achieved an amazing amount. Same with Ancelotti. But the, and Ancelotti is the same. Not, he's not changed the game. No. Guardiola's made the game unrecognisable to the point now mm. where I would go, we would go to Fratton Park to watch Portsmouth in the second tier yeah. in the 90s mm. and it would quite literally some of the players would be laughable. Yeah. The fans would be laughing yeah, at yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go and watch Gosport Borough now, National mm. League South or wherever mm. it is, maybe yeah. even lower than that sometimes, no, no, no. the players want to play. They're okay. technically gifted players. But, but the point is, is that it can be replicated at any level because it's on quite simple fundamentals. Yeah, really. well, exactly. That's, the, that's it. I, I, think, I think that's the beauty of it. But I think we should also go back to the beginning of Gordon's question, where he says Man City going out of the Champions League has already always triggered the same conversation about Pep being a bold fraud. And you kind but of has touched it, on it. You kind of touched Not on it. Not since they've won it, no. Yeah, but in the in the past, mm-hmm. the Champions League was seen to define him. And you touched on it before when you talked about um, Bayern and how mm. his spell there mm. is viewed. And I think it's worth underlining and worth reiterating that the way that his spell at Bayern is viewed outside of Germany and how it's viewed inside Germany, totally, totally different. If you ask match-going Bayern fans, for example... Mm-hmm tell us about Guardiola's spell, they would say it is the best football we have ever played hands down and it absolutely changed this club. So I think there's there's always, I think, a danger of judging things too much on the Champions League, which is a cup competition, Mm -hmm. where luck is involved, Mm -hmm. where there are fine margins, whereas the league proves what you're doing again and again Mm -hmm. and again. So if we're talking about the fundamentals of his football and how he influences... Uh, competitions, uh, league competitions and countries and all that sort of stuff. What he did at Bayern is very relevant, I think. Mm -hmm. And to say it's just a, you know, a little, yeah, take it or leave it sort of thing, I I don't think is is quite right, which is how a lot of people view it. Certainly not how we view it. But the question was about his impact on football in England. Yeah. And I think we can definitely assess that it's changed a lot since he's been here. Yeah. 
I just I'm just interested in finding out and thinking about how much of it is just down to him, because like I say, you know, a lot of football tactics have changed for years and years before Guardiola ever kicked a ball, and the, the, the teams weren't still playing WM. In the early nineties, you know that everything evolves. New ideas come along, and different people come in and influence it in that way. What I find fascinating now, though, is the huge accessibility of information. That if you're clever and if you work hard and if you look at um, the stuff you need to look at, and you can bring people along with you, it's kind of the same as any leadership position in any industry. You're going to be able to get people to do it. it I think he has had a huge amount of influence for the reasons I've stated, but I also think. There's a lot of other reasons that have had it's had it as well, and I think there's a lot of other ways of doing mm-hmm. things that maybe aren't necessarily down to him. I mean, there's the lineage, of course, of this type. I mean, you go back to Jack Reynolds, Ronis McKells, all these kind of figures. Yeah. Guardiola's at the top of that pile at the moment because he's alive, because he's operating. You know, that's it. And but how much has he? How much? So that, that's the lineage. Yeah. Going from Ajax through to Barcelona yeah. and that stuff, but it's different. But that was, that was going to be my question. Yeah. How how different? So he's basically taken the philosophy and moved it on. To well, something but new. he's he's operating in the modern era with modern methods of of fitness and health and all these all these kind of things. He's put his own spin on it. But again, that period of success at Barcelona puts him on the map. And and when he comes to England via Germany, he is the guy. And also the way he is, his mannerisms and so on. He is like a mad scientist sometimes. Yeah. And I think that goes into it. But by a lot of accounts, he seems to be a you know, for the most part, a good man manager because players like playing for him as well. I know we'd think that he's an unrelatable kind of alien from another planet. They like winning, they like having the ball, that's why. Yeah, but but they also... But, but and because it's a collective philosophy, everyone feels important. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I, I think that the, the man management can't be understated as well. Of course no. he's operating at a, you know, a club with untold riches and um, and and they really haven't told us, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, um, quite specifically <laughs> untold riches, yeah, uh, uh, and all that. I think that um, they should uh, see that in the, in the impending court case. Oh, it's a mystery, indeed. And the fact that he was a great player in the, the Cruyff Dream team as well, I think, adds to the the gravitas of him, perhaps for some generations. It's uh, been it's been a great yeah. it's been a great thing. it's the whole package really. It's been a great thing for football in general because the other aspect that isn't really discussed that much. I wonder whether the idea that we talked about it on the show yesterday a bit about how lower league clubs, uh, non-league clubs are about to be fucked over again mm. by this FA Cup change. It's really tough for clubs at that level and below to, to function and to succeed and to even exist in a lot of occasions. Um, I wonder how much, it'd be difficult to work this out, but I wonder how much more fans who of a lower league club or a non-league mm. club enjoy watching their team when they know their team are going to play a bit. Yeah. Like, I wonder if there's a calculation being made by a chairman in, say, the yeah. National League or something. Mm-hmm. Say, like, actually, do you know what? The reason we want that manager is because um, actually the fans quite like watching them play. Yeah. So they'll come back. Because no one can guarantee success. No, but if you come down and everyone just lumps and, it, and exactly. it's crap, yeah. you, you end up just, we've all been there. You end up thinking, and it's not true, of course, but you end up thinking, oh, I can fucking do that. Yeah, I know what you, you mean. Know, do you know what I mean? You want to see something a bit special. And I think that the, the point you made earlier about the, having a system. Well, you realise, I think, more than, than say, ever, that, that wouldn't be true. But certainly, I personally am more aware than ever of, of systems being in place that can win you a game over better individuals in this country. Yeah. And I think in this country, you used to be like, right, we'll go toe-to-toe with them. We're bigger, we're stronger, or we're just better, or whatever. But we learned the hard way with the England national team. You'd go away to, say, a Croatia side, for yeah. example, who you think, well, I recognise maybe three or four. Oh, there's that guy he plays over there. But the way they kept the ball, the way they yeah. did the, this technique and so on. And I think that if you can apply that, which surely you can to other um, levels and so on. I think managers maybe didn't give people the credit, perhaps, or maybe it's more that the, the, the people coming through are more influenced by other... Um, but is it not also... Football? Is it not also... And it's an interesting one, I think. I guess I'd fall down the side that says he's a massively influential coach but he's been able to be more influential because of the information revolution. Because if you are someone like a Shankly mm-hmm. or a Paisley or even you know, a Ferguson to an extent, how many people are watching it? But you, Not you, as many. You say, you say that, but actually, I think that really underestimates the massive cultural resistance there was to Guardiola when he arrived. And Marcus touched on that. Mm. I think that sense mm. that when he arrived and... People wanted to pick out bits where he said, you know, tackling is a last resort, for example. That became like an an infamous quote. People wanted to take issue with his philosophy. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. wanted him to 
to fail. fail. And still, Particularly with the Joe Hart thing. He's you know yeah, I mean, of a great boy. It was England number one. Yeah. You know, and, so. and, yeah. and still, in low divisions, you'll you have a lot of fans who, and I, I speak to a lot of fans who go, football's not that complicated. Just play 4 4 2. Yeah. You still have that. Yeah, yeah. So for, for him to have affected, for him to, he's been enormously influential in helping to affect that. The most change, influential person in, 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 in these kind of terms in, in my life. Definitely. I, 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 I mean, the, the only other one who, who, who would have a, a little bit of a say perhaps would be Jürgen Klopp. But I mean, again, because I'd say Klopp has influenced things way more than the likes of Mourinho and Ancelotti, who, as yeah. I say... But his footballing them. philosophy has yeah. changed, even if his man management one hasn't. Yeah. That's yeah. the difference. Indeed. Um, Indeed. Um, that's a great question, though. Yeah, really thanks, great thanks question. Jordan. Enjoyed that. Um, Jamie up next. He's in California. But what an international mailbag Whoa. this week. One of those mailbags like a Canadian backpack. All those, stamp, <laughs> all those uh, flags on it. Specifically Canadian ones. The Canadians always do that, don't they? Because they don't want to be seen as American. Yeah, okay, right, yeah. I think that's sense. unfair on Americans. Yeah, well, here's an American here, we think. Exactly. From California, so we'll, we'll, Jamie. Yeah, let's try and uh, reset the balance, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he says, um, he's a Patreon subscriber as well, so oh. good on him. Can't slag him off, no, legally. No. So it's, in the, it's in the terms and conditions. <laughs> Can't slag him off. He says, a few weeks ago, you introduced listeners to El Ferralito, the San Francisco amateur side that put Portland Timbers two out of the cup in a fantastic de- uh, display that also saw Harvey Neville sent off. <laughs> um, so, something for everyone there. Yeah. Good. I like this work. <laughs> Uh, yesterday, El Farolita, who are named after a local taqueria, uh, faced Oakland Roots, the professional team from just across the bay who normally play in the US second tier. Mm. Being a local derby, the stadium was packed. Plucky El Farolito took an early lead, but finally lost 2-1 in extra time. Both sides ending the match with 10 men and with a chorus of expletives in Spanish from both fans and players <laughs> and requests to tone down the language over the PA system. This sounds great. Um, this sounds like everything we've lost in English football. <laughs> um, you may be familiar with American sports games involving T-shirts fired into the crowd from a kind of cannon. At halftime in this game, instead of T-shirts, they fired burritos into the crowd. Yes! Much to everyone's delight. Make sure the tin foil is tightly sealed. Yeah. Or the foil, should I say. Yeah. Uh, so you can use it as a hat after. Yeah, indeed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what food items would Premier League or Football League sides fire into the crowd if this trend catches on? Yeah. I hope it does catch on. You couldn't have tacos, could you? No. Nah. God, Benetton everywhere. Yeah. I hope it does catch on. Mm. I think I think football fans are ripped off enough as it each uh, as it is, and uh, yeah, a bit of uh, free food out into the. Out of the Firstly, Oakland Roots, great kit. Is it really great kit? Well, you've got one with the Black Panther on, mm. and one with uh, the fist on it. Very nice. All right, blimey. very good. Very um, good. You have to ch- pick food items that are conducive. So I'd probably Hence go... burritos and not tacos. Down Portsmouth, I would probably... Do you know what? Sausage roll. I was going to say battered sausage. Oh, now you're talking. Yeah, because you've got a little bit of protection in there. Wrap it up in a bit of foil. Lovely. Like, it'd be like firing I'm giant penises at everyone. This is, <laughs> this is a health and safety nightmare. I'm thinking with pizzas, though, Like there's a Frisbee-esque a disc, quality to disc, them, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, yeah again, I mean, it's but, it, about... but it would be a frozen pizza, wouldn't it? That's, that's the problem. That is the problem, Andy. It, do you think they don't do it here because people will get hurt? Because well, didn't, didn't Gunnosaurus used to fire a pizza? It feels a bit Maud Flanders, doesn't it's it? Absolutely, yeah. It's absolutely reckless. That's why they don't do it. But it's great. Yeah, of course. Have a bit of fun with it. It's the Premier League, mate. Don't a talk full, to me. A full roast dinner if it's a Sunday game. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep your traditions going. <laughs> Here's your gravy. <laughs> um, any fruit? Yeah, that would work. You Not know. people aren't going to be interested in that. I can see it Bunch being of grapes. <laughs> I can see it being sponsored by Greg's. Yeah, they oh. would do it, wouldn't they? I mean, I think we've got a lot here, like a pork pie, that kind of thing. Yeah. It works. See, maybe it will happen with Greg's because they're they're set to mount a massive push in the states. You know, are Don't, they really? Yeah, they are. Donuts, Andy. You could see Donuts some of them flying work. through the air. Or oh, if, you, yeah. if you're craving a toss business, if, if you like whatever that is, if you're at Craven Cottage, you know, a lovely bottle of Chateau Lafitte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mind the champers. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think that answers. Think that answers well, a camembert. Uh, if that, it was for that, yeah, that answers Jamie's question. There we are, Jamie. I think yeah. you've yeah, you've had your fun there, Jamie. We've got one here from Tyler on X. The EFL dished out their Player of the Season awards this week, and not a minute too soon. No, no, um, yeah. Who should win it for this season? In the Premier League. In the Premier League. I mean, League. There, there are two overwhelming candidates for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Declan Rice, Phil and Foden. Joao Bielini at what? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Foden, you said. Are you Rice, sending yeah. me out? You're sending me out, aren't you? I'll get, he'll send you out. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, obviously there's, what, six games left for some teams, five games for others. If you're a Chelsea boy, then there's seven whole games left. So, what are the, who are the candidates then? So, you've mentioned two there. Did, you said Phil Foden and Declan Rice. Yes. Good choices. What about Ollie Watkins? Yep. Yeah. What about... You've been influenced by Emmy Martinez this week, I mm. think. What about... And that's no bad thing. What about Anthony Gordon? 
Gordon. No, yeah. or is, that a bit, is that a bit of a stretch? Do you think? I, th- I think. I think you wouldn't say he's a winner, but his name in the conversation. I think he's nominated. A nominee. Gone. I had yeah. five. I, I, first of all, I need to make it very, very clear to anyone listening, and yeah. Andy can tell me if I'm incorrect here, but I don't think I am. The reason these awards are given out at this point in the season, which is an absolutely baffling time to do it for the most part, is because they couldn't get the players to commit to it, to fill the forms in, to do all the stuff no. before the end of the se- at the end of the season because they all just wanted to go away. Yeah. So that well, was... people will go on holiday for the actual awards. Exactly. Well. So they have to do it early. So they do it with like two games. So it's then. pointless. It's actually pointless. Because yeah, because if, if how suddenly... are you going to have an awards but... ceremony with two games of the season left? Yeah. What was well, okay. See, but I'm, in the last six games, if Declan Rice is man of the match in six games and Arsenal go in to win the league, yeah, then, it, then it's him. Yeah. Exactly. But, but you're talking about a season where it's relatively close. Well, it doesn't I matter. Mean, this is not the same every season. Yeah, it doesn't it? matter though, Andy. The, the point is, is that if you have these awards, you know, with a handful of games left, it's 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 silly bollocks. The take is this. The take the only take is this. Do it at the end of the season when shit's settled, or don't do it. Yeah. That's mm. the take. But given that Tyler, let's yeah. message him, we're gonna have to do it. I came up with a five. I'll give you my five. Yeah. If you like. Mm. And one or two kind of Slightly interesting ones in I there. I hope Dominic Solanke gets a mention. He doesn't. Well, because he plays for a smaller team. And the South Coast. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got Declan Rice, the aforementioned, yeah. Phil Foden, the aforementioned. That's two, fair enough. Fair enough. I've got Rodri in there. Okay. I've got Ooh, Cole Palmer in there. Okay. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I've got your friend of mine. Got to be Watkins. Pascal Gross in there. Oh, come on. No one has got more assists in the Premier League this season than Pascal Gross. I don't care. He doesn't get any credit. No, and I think it should be a nice. <laughs> should be. It could be a nice vehicle for him. Yeah. Wouldn't and it be nice? I mean, it'd be nice. But I as think... Brian Wilson said, I, I think it'd be nice. <laughs> I think we know that Marcus hates all below elite clubs that aren't Fulham. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, no, no. I no. I think it's good to mention Pascal Gross. I don't think he's going to win it. I wouldn't have even Marcus. Yeah. Make it absolutely clear. Yeah. I don't think he's going to win it. Right. I'm just giving you a <laughs> list of players. That I think deserve a bit of credit. I, yeah, okay. Fine. I don't Cole Palmer, you've got to say as a standout. I mean, he's got 20 yeah. Premier League goals. Yeah. I yeah know. No, no one's complaining with that. Right. Who do you I, think? It's basically it'll be Rice or Foden, realistically, who we think will win it, just because how the voting goes and, and all that. And I guess your argument would be Foden has had the breakout season, which suggests he'll be the outstanding English player in the Premier League for quite a long time to come. Mm. You notice how I had my little Jude Bellingham caveat there. Yeah. And but I think if you're talking about the influence of a player on a team, no, go on. It's is Rice ahead of Foden, I think. Yeah. Because Foden has kind of. Like he's been amazing. Yeah. He's been individually amazing, just like Cole Palmer's been individually amazing. But in a way, the fact that Fod- Manchester City is becoming Foden's team creates more questions than answers because of the way that it affects Erling Haaland. Yeah. Whereas I think what Rice has added to Arsenal is absolutely what they needed. Arsenal have changed him, and he's changed I Arsenal. Agree with all that. Would you? Yeah, no, I, I do as well. Would you? I mean, I, just to, to give a couple of players mentions. I mean, at West Ham. You know, obviously Bowen's had a really good season. Yeah, excellent. I thought you might mention Lucas Pakatara. Would that be a touch generous? Do you think? Slow start to the season. Okay. I think it is a bit generous. Yeah. All right, fair enough. I mean, and even if he had a great finish to the season, who cares? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Exactly, um, yeah. And the other one, <laughs> I was going to mention nobody from Liverpool. Yeah. Maybe not even Alexis what, what, McAllister. What I'd like to happen. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Is I'd like Declan Rice to get it now. Yeah. And then get sent off every single yeah. game for the rest of the season. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> disgrace himself. Arsenal to somehow finish no, no, no. 12th. Play, play the game at walking pace. <laughs> like letting people go. Like all the puzzles are mad. Do, do the full Casemiro. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. What sort of performed the last five games of the season in mink and robes? Yeah, exactly. Jamie yeah. Redknapp said of Casemiro the other day um, on a Monday Night Football, it's like I'm watching Soccer Raid. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the most amazing damning of... Because well, he's played. Yeah. He knows. He knows what it's like. He knows, he knows the club. Like. He, knows. He, knows, he knows the charity event. Is he talking of the brutality of Boris Johnson so, back so in the day? That wasn't Soccer Aid. Was that not? No. It was something else. I, I'm forgetting you're a Soccer Aid purist. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not a Soccer Aid purist, but I'm just saying that that... You is, are a Soccer Aid purist. Yeah. I never watch it. I like it. I'm, I endorse it. Do you really do you never it. watch it because you're not invited to play? He doesn't I, like. It. I mean, it is a scandal, by the way. He hasn't he hasn't that watched it since scandal. they didn't invite. Uh, they, since they didn't get Serge from Kasabian back. <laughs> he scored a lovely goal that it's time. Beauty. He's a good player. But for the rest of the world, uh, do you know why I think I stopped watching it? It's because there was like England internationals playing for the rest of the world. Yeah, and I was like, come on, get up some standards. Yeah, you do. So, so before we lose track of this, just one player. Just do one player each. Yeah. Now, who who are you going to just say? Who are you gonna Rice. Yeah, I would say Rice as well. Anthony Robinson. 
There we go. Yeah, hey. uh, right, this is uh, from uh, Layla on Instagram. Uh, Bilbao's boat and Portsmouth smashing up O'Neill's got me thinking. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best mass celebration of a club or country's achievement you guys have ever seen? Can I just chime in and say, <laughs> Portsmouth smashing up on O'Neill's wasn't an officially <laughs> sanctioned celebration. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Portsmouth could have could have had a boat. They could have gone around the little, see, little you, island. You've seen this invite? <laughs> just, say, just, just vandalism. Uh, for a right old tear up. Yeah. Are you saying it's better than athletic because it's spontaneous rather than telegraphed? I think it's definitely up there. You can't. Yeah. You wouldn't better say. You wouldn't better say around Portsea Island. Mm, no. It's not. It's not really. You can't really do that. It takes too long. A, it's too marshy and too tidy. It's more of a spit okay. than an island. It's no. It is an island. Is it actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spit would is a better word to describe the. You know, vibe. Well, Gosport where I grew up is a peninsula. It is pleasing. I mean, having yeah. seen Athletic and their Bilbao boating, I don't think you can beat that. I don't think you can beat that. It's, it's it reminded me of when Farage you know, did that thing in the Thames for Brexit. <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> It didn't remind me of that. And no, no thanks, same. Thank you for reminding me of that, you knobby. You, you, know, you, know, you know what I think would take that up a level? If you go to the English Garden in Munich. Been there many a time. They, great spot. They surf. On the river. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That. I, I mean, I would, yeah. I would love to see, well, maybe not some of the more injury-prone players. Uh, don't get Leon Goretzka on a long board. Well, they've got nothing there. to celebrate this year anyway. But like Har- well, Harry, Kane. Yeah. Harry Kane win the, win the Champions League, surfing in the English Garden. That'd be amazing. That would be good. But what? But, uh, so, but is there a particular mass celebration uh, uh, that, um, that that we've seen? I mean, when Argentina won the World Cup, that was in, be my Qatar, one. Yeah, that you can't deny that. That was fantastic. Uh, just the whole. I mean, that that massive. The big fella on the bus stop. Oh, okay, come yeah. on. What were they saying? Ole, 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 gordo. gordo, gordo. Yeah, gordo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was good. He yeah, got that up there. Scenes. He did get up Absolutely there. Absolutely amazing. They were amazing scenes. To be, to be fair, I, I, the Argentinian one struck. Stru- um, came to my mind possibly because it's one of the more recent ones but actually I, I thought that um, without getting too kind of mawkish about it what the UK had been through and what England had been through in 2016 and how shit it is at the moment mm. 2018 was actually pretty good it was. When, Eng- when England got through I know they didn't actually win anything so maybe it doesn't count for, for, for Layla's purposes but when England got through to the semi-final of the World Cup yeah. London it was amazing in London it was genuinely amazing yeah. apart, yeah. From, apart from the being at home bit in terms of regeneration, in terms of changing the feeling around a national team, it was like Germany in 2006. Yes. Ah. Yeah, good comparison. The most, I the think. best experience I've had of that kind of thing personally would be when Portsmouth promoted in 2003, of course, but more recently would have been in the in the England-Denmark game in, in the Euros when mm. they got through to the final when they beat Denmark after extra time. Yeah. That was an incredible atmosphere that I'll never forget. That yeah. was an incredible celebration. It's not really answering Layla's question, but the way that Argentina responded to winning that World Cup... Mm. Was amazing. Yeah. In, was amazing. In, in terms, in terms of a mass celebration, this is slightly different because I'm thinking of the players doing a group celebration, which is more the question. W- when I mean. when Leon won the league in 2006, for the first game after they won the league, they were playing the derby against Saint Etienne, and they all went a bit mad and they like sort of uh, painted their their hair in Leon colours. Oh, I remember that, red, yeah. white, and blue, and the bold ones like sort of pasted it on their pates and all the rest of it. And you thought. In a derby, this is red rag to a ball. This is going to totally backfire on you. And it it didn't. They um, won 4-0. There are a lot of streamers in the club colours mm. every time they score a goal. It was great derby shithousing as well as great league celebrating. I, I can't imagine anything worse than being a St Etienne player on that yeah, day. Yeah, disrespectful to a great historic club in St Etienne as well. Very yeah, and sanctioned by the late, great Gerard Houllier. <laughs> and you have uh, to love that. I do love that. The only, the only one, um, the, the, the other one leapt to mind was Argentina influence certainly was that famous um, mural of Maradona in Naples oh, where yeah. his face is Which over one? the window <laughs> uh, yeah there are a lot oh, I forget the name of the square actually. the one on the shutters on the shutters yeah exactly and the guy um, that's in the Spanish quarter isn't it that's right yeah that's it that's, I the, mean it's, it's kind of uh, they, they've it's, it's Maradona land since he died basically <laughs> yeah um, uh, Chiro uh, Maiello I think it's pronounced um, is a chap who, who who lives there he moved there in 2015 or something like that mm. uh, that's my favourite mural in my football murals book there you go yeah yeah. Okay, nice little plug at the end Andy well done mate mm, yeah I didn't read Get it the football I haven't book. plugged it for a while to be fair oh, fair yeah. enough but that one is, is great because it's obviously you know, we know Maradona and Naples, and oh, of course, blah 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 blah. Uh, but it, it, he it hadn't. Uh, did he open it when they won the World Cup, Argentina? Because it's quite famous for that, that that those shutters stay shut because everybody can see it. So he doesn't like casually open the window. I think it's to the bathroom and let everybody see his, um, you know, him having a shower or whatever. Yeah. But when they won the league, Napoli, 
yeah. the, 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 the shutters went open and of course there was hundreds of Napoli fans down there when it opened, and all yeah. that. And that was, that's a lovely little uh, yeah, it's nice. uh, it's, it's quirky thing because I think the, the barge uh, athletic is particularly good. You're looking for these kind of quirky things or these rituals. or, or well, like when is. Sergio Ramos dropped the trophy and the bus ran over it. That was good. That was a good one. Mm. Yeah, I, I, think was... I, I think Steve Foster did that first for Luton with the Little Woods Cup. There we go. There you are, you see. How, how, headband better, is Steve Foster. What a better way to end than a headband of Steve Foster in the Little Woods Cup, Marcus. I can't picture yeah. Steve Foster. <laughs> I mean, <neither. laughs> no. <laughs> but often Andy's references are quite obscure when he mm. talks about, I don't know, Wimbledon players and so on. Just imagine a man from the 80s um, in, a, in, a, in a bandage. and He's either an American film hero or he's a Wimbledon centre half. He <laughs> was Eric Young before Eric Young was Eric Young. Indeed. Um, we haven't got time to get into that. <laughs> no, certainly not. Another reference don't quite get. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.